Good evening, folks. You're listening once again to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, uh, i got to tell you that uh, I am exhausted. I have just worked myself uh, right, into, uh, right into the corner. And uh, I, I'm so tired. I wasn't going to do the broadcast tonight. I had already called WBCQ and asked them to do a rerun. And they had it all queued up. I called them about three minutes before the broadcast was supposed to start change my mind because I, I just know that everybody's out there waiting for a live broadcast and uh, even though I don't want to do it because tell you the truth my brain is not working I am I am totally bone tired I get lots of information all kinds of things those of you who have been to the website you know that uh, you know how hard we've been working and what we've been doing and those of you who have not been to our website, you need to go there, williamcooper.com. Go there and go there all the time. We're updating it constantly, and there's uh, tons and tons of information that you need to know. And I mean, really, truthfully, you need to know it. So go there. Read it. Think about it. Uh, the things that we give you are designed to uh, educate you. And, and make you think before you go and jump off some stupid cliff. So, um, there you have it. Um, I'm going to take a little pause here. I'll be right back. We're going to open the phones. And uh, it's going to be an open topic. Uh, open, you know, whatever you open your mouth. <laughs> and uh, and talk, okay? Because, uh, and if you, if you want to ask me questions about things, if I know the answer, I'll give you the answer. If I don't, I'll tell you I don't know. But we got tons of stuff on the website, WilliamCooper.com. Make sure you go there. Make sure you read everything. Make sure you go to the Exclusives Archives. Make sure you click on all the links we provide for you so that you get a good overview. Now, on our website, you don't find all this stuff about Rosie O'Donnell or, you know, what movie is number one or making all the money. You don't find any junk on our website. Everything there is to the point, and it has to do with two things. Number one. What's happening? What's the truth about what's happening? What does it mean for us and our country? And you're not going to find anything else on our website except for those things. Hour of the time. I'm William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. The phones are open. 520-333-4578. Phones are open. 520-333-4578. I'm going to take your calls for the entire hour tonight. So if you've got comments or questions or, or new information or whatever it is, uh, tonight's the night to get it in. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill Cooper. Yes. Um, I'm not hearing the word Reichstag you have being used very much in the media these days. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, there's almost a fear even to, to mention the concept. I mean, I don't actually believe this, but that uh, America deserved it. Now, I know that's a terrible thing to say. I don't believe that. But... America does see people saying it, and then whoa, there's an attack on them. No, America does not deserve it, but America has brought it upon itself through the foreign policy that we've had of meddling in other people's affairs throughout the world, trying to bend them to our will when they have a different culture, different religion, different will, uh, and they don't want to go that, in that direction. And we have really hurt some people really, really bad. No, America does not deserve, nobody deserves what happened on Tuesday the 11th. Nobody. 
Well, I think that's what they mean, what you said. It's a matter of a reaction to foreign policy. Well, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Well, I guess the question that's being skirted internationally, uh, a friend of mine... Who uh, no, that's not true. It, uh, that's I, I see that everywhere. It's brought up everywhere. It's just not touched in the communist news networks. won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Somebody mentioned it on BBC television, and the result and reaction... Of, uh, now, this was early on in the event, so there was everybody uh, was pretty pretty uh, sore about things, but uh, the head of the BBC stood up and publicly apologized. Well, well he, he, making that he, he's a fool. Why would he do that if it's the truth? He did it because uh, maybe he's intimidated. Maybe he wants to be politically correct. Uh, maybe uh, he doesn't care about the truth. But it's the truth. You know, you'll never hear me apologizing for what I said tonight. And I'll say it again tomorrow night or any other night it needs to be said. In fact, it's on our website. We're taking everybody to task. We're telling the truth. And if you want to know what the truth is, go to our website, williamcooper.com. One of the few, Bill. And don't forget to participate in the poll that we have have up there. And, wow. and, and the poll is not a trick question, okay? <laughs> don't think it's a trick question. Just answer it honestly. If you read that and you agree with it, send us an email. Tell us you agree. If you disagree, send, a, uh, send us an email saying you disagree. You don't have to say anything else. We don't want a dissertation. We just want to know if you agree or disagree. Um, did, you, did you notice the, uh, let's say, masonically symbolic aspects of this, the phoenix, the rising of the ashes, um, in some of this footage that we were inundated with in the last... Uh, oh, I've seen so. tons of, of symbolism, yes, absolutely. The, the, number the, the, the number 11 permeates almost everything connected with this, and if you know anything about religious and... and uh, uh, the numerology of the mysteries and... Uh, um, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's way beyond any kind of coincidence, and the odds oh, yeah. are, are, are are off the chart. The uh, I noticed there was two Amer uh, pivotal American revolutionary battles that occurred on uh, September 11th. Uh, Brandywine and uh, what was the other one? I looked them up last night, and I found it. If you just do a search on September 11th on the internet, you find things that have nothing to do with this that are commemorations of events that occurred in American history in the past, and uh, it's, very, it's very interesting to make connections out of what you're seeing there, because mm -hmm. you wonder whether the conspirators, whoever they were, were cognizant of these these things, other beyond the 911 emergency day. Well, that's, of this. That, there's a lot of, awful lot of deception involved with this. Well, uh, you, you want, do you think it's going to be, this, is, this uh, conversation <laughs> is going to be wider, broader? in the days to come? Do you think people will if, it, if, it's, if it's not, then you'll know for sure that what I've said about the American people all along, that they're stupid, is absolutely correct. Well, I, I just fear for what will happen. I mean, I mean, well, look what's happening already. Here in Phoenix, we had a guy go out looking for Muslims and killed a guy from India because he looked like a Muslim. He killed him. Yeah. Just for no other reason than the media's got him all stirred up over this and, and he just hates Muslims. And, and he shot at two other people before he killed this, this poor guy from India who wasn't a Muslim at all. He's a Sikh. And, you know, if you know anything about religion, you know, Sikh has nothing to do with, with, with Muslims. Well, yeah. If the distinction doesn't really have to be made anymore. It's, it's more like they yeah. look different. And the same thing, same, thing, same thing happened in Texas. And I have a, I've got a, a deep feeling that it's happened in a lot of places that, that the major news media is not covering. Well, I'm in I'm Canada, so I'm looking down at you wondering what's going to happen between the two of us in the future because of this, the fallout, the borders, and the perimeter. Well, right now, the borders are sealed. Well, I know that, but uh, we're, we've obviously got a lot of advanced press before this happened up here about uh, the, the leaks that are occurring across the border of uh, terror cells from our country to yours that are just harboring here because of our weak immigration laws. Well, that's another thing. The now United, the United States thing. government claimed that they had no advance warning and no intelligence regarding this whatsoever, and now we're finding out that that's, oh, that's not just a lie. That's one of the biggest lies they've ever told. They had advance warning from lots of different sources. This has all the earmarks of looking the other way. <laughs> Oklahoma City, baby. Yeah. Well, All over again. Well, watch your back, Bill. Yeah. Tighten it up, and uh, good luck. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Bye. Five two zero three 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 four five seven. I don't know why I'm doing this broadcast tonight, folks. I can't think very well. You know, you reach that state of total exhaustion, and you're not sleeping at night, and uh, you're just so darn tired. 
that your brain doesn't work anymore? Well, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Good evening. You're on the air. Hi. How are you doing? This is Pete. Hi, Pete. Hi. And I just have some food for thought from up here in Canada. Um, I don't think that uh, the, the Twin Towers here is, I think they're going to be acted on quickly, like fairly soon, to actually make use of it. We have whoa, actually... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what are you talking about? In terms of the World Trade Center going down, and that I would not be want to be John Crescian at this moment, let me tell you, because of the dissolution of our border and the invocation of Area 1. And I think Canada is going to take a hit, because you don't have two kings in Camelot. And why George Sr. has been up here currying Mike Harris and Peter Pocklington, and Joe Who is now rubbing elbows with Dick Cheney. And where's poor old King Jean that they led right down the path? And we know another King John and what happened to him. Get ready for Area 1. And the thing that's going to bring us all together. And those two World Trade Center buildings are nothing compared to a bomb going off. Well, and all those suitcase bombs that are walking around, do people think well, they're going to walk around forever? Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're getting off into woo-woo land. Well, I don't know about that. Goodbye. Don't get into woo-woo land with me. Don't be talking about suitcase nuclear weapons if you can't prove they exist. Unless you say, this is my opinion. You know the rules of this broadcast, and you know I won't allow that. I am not Alex Jones. And during this broadcast, you will not have Russia launching ICBMs against us. You understand that? Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Uh, on the first day, I taped uh, a, a multiple of hours of our local show in New York City, uh, CBS, which was the only one broadcasting to the antenna, you know, not to, not to cable. Uh, I have an interesting, a uh, number of interesting articles. I want to uh, duplicate that tape and send it to you. Also, I've been going through uh, the newspaper, and there are many articles that don't add up or conflict with each other. I pulled them out, and I'd like to send those, the entire page to you. Well, send them. You don't have to ask me. Just send them. Okay. When, when I hang up from you, because I have the radio off right now, Give me the address. Over the same there. address. I've been giving it for years. Don't tell me you never wrote it down. I just want to know if it's the same. Same one. address. Any address I ever give on the air, you can send anything to. And I'll get it. No, I have been listening. Okay. And one other thing was in today's paper, the, Daily po uh, the New York Post in New York, uh, they had a picture of our U.S. Embassy in Ottawa, Canada, with a giant American flag and a giant rose. No oh boy. I just want you Here comes the rose. You know that. And I, I'm going to be sending you that also. Yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> God bless, though. So. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578. Yeah, look for more roses. You'll see. And it'll be a single rose. That's a symbol of international socialism. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. I mean, uh, I'm like you. I'm sure I've read hundreds of stuff hundreds of essays and articles on the Internet about this. And and uh, I have a question for you. Have you seen any evidence that implicates Osama bin Laden in this, these attacks? No. I, I haven't either. And neither has anybody else. I, I saw the little thumbnail biographies of the uh, the 19 hijackers, and is there any indication that any of those guys were ever even went to Afghanistan. There's a lot of indications that a lot of those guys didn't have anything to do with the bombing. They're legitimate people who were in this country uh, to go to school, and some of them went back to their own country a long time ago. And the FBI is putting their names out as being implicated as accomplices in this, and they were not only not on, on those airplanes like the FBI says they were, but they're alive and well in their home country, and... Uh, and, and their countries are saying, hey, what, what the hell are you doing? These people are right here. They're alive. They didn't bomb anybody. They weren't on any airplanes, and they weren't part of any plot. They went to the United States, went to school, and came back. And some of them have been here as long as three months. And uh, we want an apology. And, well, and they're ignoring them. Th doesn't it set, I mean, not, not that we need any more dangerous presidents, because we've, we've had many, but, I mean, doesn't it set a dangerous president when you can... Call Osama bin Laden, who no doubt is a, a sponsor of terrorism, but you can call him uh, the ringleader of this, 
or public enemy number one. When we no apparent evidence linking him to it. When we deviate from our system of justice, and when we bow to the mooing of the cattle in the herd, and say, let's nuke them all. Yeah. Let's go get some Muslim ears to mount over the fireplace. Let's just wipe them all out. Don't leave one of them living on this earth. And, and uh, you use that as, as a, a justification. In other words, what they used to call, you know, when, when you got elected and you got more than 50% of the vote, they called that a mandate. <laughs> well, when you use that to throw the justice system out the window and say, we're, we're not going to seek justice. We're not going to go after the people who are guilty, people who financed it, people who planned it, people who carried it out, people who trained them, um, you know, people that are connected, and go and try and capture them, bring them back, give them their day in court. No, without having justice without having a day in court, without doing what we know, every one of us, to be right. And if we don't do this, then that means they can do it to us, too. You have to understand. And just go sure. and, and, and murder these people. Not only murder them, but drop bombs and cruise missiles and blow things up and send troops in, you know, and have a big old war and just kill, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of people are we going to kill? Well, uh, where, where do we stop? Yeah, yeah, there, there, there is no stopping. And, and I mean, what, what are we going to do? Are we going to trade them? Uh, and you uh, think those people are just going to sit back and take it? No, that, that, that's what I was about to say. I mean, are, <laughs> are we willing to trade them uh, Kabul for Chicago? I think they're willing to trade anything in order to have an excuse to enslave the entire human race under a one-world totalitarian socialist government. That's really what this is all about. But the, the, the deal about, you know, calling bin Laden the... I mean, I'm sure he is a bad guy, but there is no evidence. Well, how can they, you... They, they, they cannot produce any, and I'm sure... They created him. He was, he yeah. was created, recruited, trained, uh, everything by the CIA. If you want to know who's really responsible for all of this, it's called C-I-A. <laughs> C-I-A. Everybody, repeat after me. C-I-A. <laughs> C-I-A. A C I A. Bill, thanks. That was my question. I, I I'm not saying there's not some evidence out there. I was just saying I haven't seen any, and I was nobody has seen have. any. They haven't presented anybody with any. They just make all these allegations, yeah. right. and they just, they keep saying we're gonna go get them. We're gonna we're gonna run them down, and we're gonna yeah, really. Ask the Soviet Union. They fought a war in Afghanistan. Ask the British. Did they run anybody down? Did they beat them? The British did it do you ever well seen either. you ever seen the mountains of Afghanistan? I'll tell you what, I fought a war in Vietnam. I was lucky I fought my war in Vietnam. If I had to fight a war in Afghanistan, I'll tell you right now, I know I wouldn't come back alive. Well, I'm afraid. And I'm a good I'm good. I was good at what I did in Vietnam. Unfortunately, I was. And I'm telling you right now, if I had to do it again in Afghanistan, I would not come back alive. Well, Bill, a um, lot of lot of Russian soldiers, lots of them, never came back alive from Afghanistan. Well, and they, you know, they used, uh, you know, carpet bombing, poison gas, poisoned wells. I mean, there's, there's they, they no used the most horrible. To do that they did it. Yeah, they used the most horrible kinds of warfare that there was, and they still couldn't beat those guys. Yeah. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Bye. And if they could beat them, they couldn't find them. <laughs> I mean, that's an incredible country. You have no idea how bad that country is. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, how you doing, Mr. Cooper? Uh, I'm about maybe 10 miles away from Ground Zero. We just got orders to stand down. You know, we was part of the rescue operation. But the one question, the one question I have is, why do we have two aircraft carriers and three battleships off the coast of New York? I mean, what's that all about? That's a good question. What is it all about? You know, it's... Shouldn't they be somewhere else? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if, if there's somebody doing this and there's some, like, uh, radical groups and stuff, shouldn't it be someplace else in the world? Well, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where they should be. I'm telling you right now, um, nobody really knows who did this. And a lot of the things that they're telling us about who did this just simply aren't true. For instance, 
Who were these guys masquerading as devout Muslims visiting these bars, bragging that the next day there was going to be tremendous bloodshed in America, using credit cards with their real names on them, and allowing their driver's license to be Xeroxed with the matching name and a photograph on it, and, uh, and drinking like, like sailors, you know, that had been at sea for 40 months, and then leave a copy of their Koran uh, on the bar stool. Devout Muslims do not drink alcoholic beverages ever. Ever. They don't go to bars. They don't get lap dances. If they were to go to a bar in their wildest dreams, even to do a business deal where they didn't drink, they would not defile their holy Koran by even taking it in there. And if they did take it in there, they would never leave it. Exactly, and leave all this... This is a setup. Somebody is framing Muslims... Those were not Muslims who did that. I'm telling you right now. I mean, you know, like, I've been in the military, I've been in Southeast Asia, and I came out of you know, Ground Zero as a volunteer, and they told us, like, you know, leave, we got the contractors in there. But I'm sitting thinking about this, I'm like, wait a minute, we have warships off the coast of New York. Yeah, why? Okay? I'm listening <laughs> to f 14 fly overhead. Yeah, why? I mean, why here? Why? I mean, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. Why? I don't have the answer. Nobody does. I bet you, if you asked the president, he couldn't tell you. Well, the president, uh, yeah. Well, you know, you know, God bless him and all that stuff. But why? It's just, it's just, <laughs> nothing does. Nothing adds up. I mean, and they. Call oh, it them. all adds up. It all adds up. It but all adds. This furthers this. This furthers the destruction of the Constitution. The but the, the furtherance of world government. It boosts the price of oil is already going out of sight. Who benefits from that? The Bush family. What did his father do when he was in office? Had a war in the Middle East. I told you when Bush Jr. was elected, there would be a major war in the Middle East, and there would be tremendous terrorist attacks in this country. I told you that on this radio. So you and I have been in, in, the, in the midst of it, okay? And the thing that bothers me is that we have warships off our coast. And weren't you just listening to what I just said? Yeah, I, I understand that, you know. But the thing of it is, is that the real thing that bothers me is that they call them... Uh, terrorist cowards. I mean, I don't know. They're not cowards. I, I wouldn't have the balls to With, be able to drive a plane into a building. Let me tell you something. Most people wouldn't have the balls just to even try and hijack a plane, much less drive it into a building. And the thing, the other thing that bothers me is that all the, you know, the uh, voice cockpit recorders mysteriously got shut off. I don't know if I'm... Well, that's not true. Let me tell you something about those. Number one, they're in an airplane, and, and they're in a part of the airplane that's inaccessible to anybody on the plane. You can't so turn. In the tail of the you cannot turn them off. You cannot listen to me. You cannot turn them off. They're lying. Now they can be damaged in the crash, but if the tape inside the recording media survives, everything is on there, and they're built to withstand crashes, and they're built so that that recording media will survive. And that's so the they're lying. The, the, the they're just lying. They're lying. In Pennsylvania. They're lying. The crash in Pennsylvania. That that's doesn't matter. Like they're lying. They're lying. You can talk about it and say crash in Pennsylvania. They say there's there's nothing on the on the thing. They say that it was turned off. It's a lie. They can't turn them off. That's right. You I thought it. I was crazy. <laughs> no, you're not crazy. Listen, i got to get some rest. I just came out of ground zero about, like, you know, 12 yeah. hours ago, and, uh... We'll go get some rest. I need some rest, yeah. I, can, I need a couple of, uh... I should be sleeping, too, right now. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> well, you're an American, sir. <laughs> Good night. I don't know what I am anymore. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578. I don't know what I am anymore. This certainly is not the country that I was taught that I lived in. All my life. It's not the country described in the Constitution for the United States of America. And I'll tell you what, I'm more afraid of martial law. I'm more afraid of this national emergency declaration. I'm more afraid of our borders being sealed. I'm more afraid of our ports and airports being shut down than I am of terrorists, regardless of how many people die. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. This is Tim in Minnesota. I had a comment about... Uh, uh, Senate Joint Resolution 23, and it doesn't... Uh, well, first... Constitutional wait, mustard. Wait a minute. First, tell the listening audience, because lots of people out there don't have any idea what you're talking about. What is it? 
Okay, it's to authorize the use of United States Armed Forces against those responsible for the recent attacks launched against the United States. No, but they don't say who's responsible, do they? No. Uh, so they're giving the president carte blanche to, to decide who is responsible for himself and to act any way he wants to if they pass that without naming the enemy. He can decide the enemy, right? Yep. And the enemy might be you and me. Yep, and it's totally unconstitutional. And I haven't heard one reporter question. Oh, of course, nobody's going to question anything because the minute you do, oh, he's not a patriot. He's not a patriot. Yeah, there is. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing to the one uh, um, member of the legislature who voted against uh, uh, passing all the, you know the that. They're vilifying that person. Lee, I think her name is. Yeah, patriotism has become a big bandwagon that a bunch of uh, people... Uh, no, wait a minute. I, whoa, whoa, I just don't understand this. Because a year ago, patriotism was politically incorrect. And if you said you were a patriot, you were worse than the dirtiest, vilest, rabid, stinking, uh, flea-bitten dog on this earth. Remember those days? Yeah, I've got a copy of uh, Project Megiddo straight from the FBI. So now all of a sudden, patriots are kings? Uh, let me tell you something. Something big wrong with this picture. Wrong. Yeah, a lot of these people flying flags are um, doing it against the flag etiquette and the code of the United States. They have no idea the proper way to fly a flag. Believe yeah, me. Yeah, they don't even understand what the flag represents. They never read the country. They don't even know what the country is. They're okay, doing. They're flying a flag because it makes them feel good. Because somebody on the television told them to fly a flag. Yeah. Now it's like high school. If if uh, green shoes are in at high school, heaven help you if you don't come to school with green shoes. You're an outcast. You remember high school days, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. If you weren't wearing the right kind of jeans or whatever the pants were, uh, you 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 weren't in, were you? Yep, well, that's what this flag bit is all about. Yep. Ain't no okay. difference. Well, take it easy, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks for calling. Bye. You're listening to The Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. Now you know why. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, Bill, uh, you made the uh, comment, and then it was confirmed the next day, uh, about uh, jets and things being scrambled. Yeah. I was the only one in the country who knew it, too. <laughs> really? Yeah. Nobody else knew it. You didn't hear it anywhere else, did you? Unless they, unless they listened to my show and then parroted me. Uh, correct. I, know, I never heard anything. But they gave the uh, time that uh, planes took off from wherever and you know, went to a certain place. Mm -hmm. And exactly what time. They named everything but Pennsylvania. And uh, when they came to Pennsylvania, nothing was said at all. Go to our website. It's all there about the F-16 that was accompanying that flight, flying 360 degrees around the plane. It was shot down by an F-16. It's on our website. But nobody's going to question it because the seven times... I don't care if they question it or not. It's the truth. Yeah, we we broke the story. We told you. You can believe it or not. I don't care. Well, I believe it. <laughs> But they're going to cover it up with a seven-ton flag. Out they're there covering the tons of stuff up. What do you expect them to do after Oklahoma City and Ruby Ridge and Waco and, of course. and all the other stuff? Yeah. Because I believed it when you said it. Bill Cooper does not lie. I may make some mistakes sometimes, but I do not ever tell you a lie, period. Uh, you don't uh, just draw that stuff out of the air. You must have some good contacts. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I got some good contacts. You'd be surprised. I told you, patriots are everywhere. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, for always providing uh, these great shows. Uh, second of all, uh, I want to address something that I think is very interesting about uh, the American people in general. Uh, in addition to the fact that they're willing to go along, uh, they're willing to believe in uh, certain kinds of numerology like the 911. Oh, yeah, and this false Nostradamus crap that's passing around all over the place. It's, it's yeah, sickening. I was going to bring up, too, is the, the Nostradamus. Yeah, it's sickening. It's all phony. It's lies. They'll pick up any rumor, 
and without ever checking or, or even trying to find out if there's any truth in it, they just pass it on. Then it spreads like wildfire among the ignorant, stupid sheeple. And they're usually also connected with ufology, New Age movement crap, and all of this paranormal stuff. And I'll guarantee you that a lot of them uh, call Miss Cleo on a regular basis. And they are staunch listeners to Art Bullshit Bell. That's right. Uh, and the funny thing is when you... Or, or they're patrons of the American Patriot Facts Network and some of those other stupid things. The, uh, the thing that I wanted to say, though, is that <coughs> when you present them with actual, uh, the actual numerology of this um, and uh, the actual symbolism of all this, they refuse to believe it. Uh, no, no, they don't want to believe it. See, they're in La La Land. They're in, they're in woo-woo, woo-woo. That's, that's what they're all about. They, they listen to Alex Jones. They listen to Art Bell. Uh, they read books like The Montauk Project, which is the biggest bullshit lie crap thing I've ever heard in my life. And they believe it. Mm-hmm. They believe it. And, and if you can, you know, if you can come along with proof that it's not true, they believe in The Philadelphia Project. They listen to Al Bielik, and they just almost worship him, a guy that's supposed to have died twice and been reborn in other bodies, and he was in the uh, Philadelphia Project and got trapped, uh, you know, in a time warp. And uh, These people are sick. You just don't understand how sick they are. That's so, right. so don't pay any attention to them. I quit paying attention to them a long time ago. Well, it's just it's one of those things that you you run up against. Just you know, don't it, when when you run up against them, take a turn and get away from them, and go to somebody who's sane and try to help them because you're never going to help these people because they're beyond help. Uh, the second point that I wanted to make was there is a lot of truth that uh, they are uh, spewing over the airwaves, and the uh, most blatant truth was spoken first on Tuesday uh, when they said that this was an attack on freedom. And uh, it certainly is. I was the first one who said that on this broadcast, and nobody ever said it until I said it. Okay. And, well, that's what they, uh, you know, you've got uh, uh, President Bush saying it, uh, cabinet members, people in, uh, in Congress, call, and there's yeah. even graphics on TV yeah. calling it an attack on freedom. Yeah. And in fact, the first place that it appeared was uh, right after, right, you know, when the attack occurred on our website. Mm-hmm. That it was... An attack against freedom. And, well, I just wanted to point out the irony of their saying that um, George Bush is... You see, uh, you see, on Tuesday... Excuse me? On Tuesday, I wasn't broadcasting at my regular time like tonight. Right, you were broadcasting I started all day for early in the morning and broadcast all day. And the first place you ever heard, or anybody in the whole world ever heard, that it was an attack upon freedom was on this broadcast. Well, when you say it, that's that's the truth. When they say it down in Washington, that's irony because they're going to be the very ones that are attacking our freedom. Yeah. Um, but you but you don't understand something else. The White House listens to this broadcast every night that I'm on. You're the most dangerous radio host in America. That's right. You think that's they wouldn't that. listen to me after they pronounced that? <laughs> <laughs> they have to listen to me. I represent the people in this country that they are the most fearful of. Because you possess the uh, true, uh, the true weapons of truth. Uh, the, the things that nope, are most nope, dangerous to them. nope. It's because I'm not afraid to die for what I believe. And uh, just like those guys that crashed into those buildings, you can't beat people like that. You think you're going to go over and bomb them out of existence? If they're so pissed off at us and so angry at us and so disturbed by us that they're willing to come over here and die to make a point to get us to listen to what they have to say, you can't beat them. You can't bomb them out of existence, and the more you bomb them, and the more you hurt them, the more they're going to hate us, and the more suicide bombers and airplane pilots and, and uh, uh, you know, terrorists you're going to create. That's well, the truth. I, I do think that we can beat them, not with war, but with what America is really saying. We have to get out of their business. We have to sit down and listen to them. We have to understand that we're not the only people in the world who know something and who have feelings and who get hurt. These people have been hurt so bad that they're willing to die to make us understand how bad they're hurting. And 
They're not just doing this to go to paradise for Allah. That's not why they're doing it. Because if that was true, they would have been doing it a long, long time ago. They're doing it to make a point, to say, you're not listening to us. You don't understand what's going on over here. You are hurting us. You are really screwing with us, and we are, we've been hurt so bad that now we're going to come and make you hurt the same way. And, and the answer is what? Let's bomb them out of existence. That ain't going to work. Well, that's what they're saying down in Washington, and if I may be uh, a bit crude, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, people down in Washington that haven't been able to uh, get an erection in years, and they got laid the other night. If I, if I may say that. Well, I don't really know what you mean by that, but... Uh, well, the minute they mention war, uh, that's better than Viagra for some of those guys. <laughs> um, you may be right about that. Well, I'm going to let somebody else call in. Thank you very much, Bill. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Yeah, the, 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 you know, this is a sickness. This is really a sickness. And when you start listening to people... Um, Let's go, nuke him. Good evening, you're on the air. Bill, this is Gordon. Yep. Can you hear me on the cell? I got you. I've been out trying to straighten these truck drivers out, and they, they just don't... They all want to go over there and do it up over there. Yep, well, you know what? Them, uh, you, you, know, you know what? You're chasing your tail. You know what you ought to do? You know, how to, you know how to scare the hell out of them? How's that? As soon as they say that, pull out a U.S. Army recruiting badge, pin it to your chest... Pull out a, a, con, a recruiting contract and say, sign right here on the dotted line, son. We'll have you in boot camp by morning. And you watch them run for their trucks. Because they're, they're, <laughs> they're a bunch of lying, hypocrite bastards, and that's the truth. They'll wag their mouth. But you don't, been, you don't see I've them. I've been trying, Bill. It's you, different all over the yeah, country. They want to go nuke them, but you don't see them down signing up, do you? Yeah, there's a bunch of them sitting here with no freight either. Yeah. I think the economy's in the tank. Well, it is. What, yeah. Do you know anything about the derivative uh, market at this date right now on the international currencies? You know, like uh, long-term capital and that that supposedly was going in the drink well, it a is. couple of years ago. It's got to be all back asswards, isn't it? What are you, what are you talking about? The, the currency traders on the derivatives, the hedge funds. Then yeah, what about it? All right, I sat here in Albuquerque on load this morning, and all day long all I got was a stock market and never gave an oil prevail quote or a, that's because, or a, that's or because gold, or then they gave a gold quote or right. anything. That's because nobody's interested in that. Well, I was. And the common man <laughs> doesn't know nothing. They're not talking to you. They're talking to the common uh, jerks out there that don't have a brain and don't understand what's important and what's not important. If you want to know that, call Charles Schwab and they'll tell you. That's true. Carl, well, call call the any brokerage firm and ask them the question. Whether you've got an account with them or not, they'll tell you. And if, and if they won't tell you, go on the Internet to any of those places where they got all that information, and you can see it right there. I've been doing it all day. Okay. Uh, gold is real, is all I know, and it's constitutional, and... Uh, we're going in the drink on, on all this process. Yep. You better bet your boots we are. They got this one figured out to a T. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know what they got figured out. Well, uh, it doesn't look good. How is Crusher? Is he taking the collapse good or what? The financial markets and all that good? Crusher loves this. <laughs> he knows he just crushes pretty, another bone out. He knows pretty soon he's has some leg bones to chew on. <laughs> Okay, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Give, give your address, address out again before your program's over. Uh, I don't have a zip code. I got it written four times over in here on fuel slips. 85925. What's that? 85925. Got it. Thank right. you, sir. You're welcome. Bye. The address is hot, H O T T, in care of 101.1 FM. P.O. Box 940, Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. That's hot, H-O-T-T, -T, in care of 101.1 FM, P.O. Box 940.
Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. And if you want us to stay on the air, you better get some substantial donations in here right now. Because not too much has come in this month. And it's uh, over half gone, so I'm starting to get pretty worried here. So come on, folks. You want this broadcast to stay on the air, you better, you better support it with money. Okay? You got the address? Send in your donations right now. Good evening. You're on the air. This is Rudolph from New Jersey. Uh, I hear all kinds of statements that who is responsible for this terrorist, but nobody says that the original terrorist, terrorist movement was organized by Soviet Union and the communists. Well, I, <laughs> I think the Soviet Union organized terrorists, and so has the CIA, as you know. And not uh, just, not just the Soviet Union. So, uh, so no, I mean, they were different, but the the ones that employed the the uh, uh, Arabs was organized in Soviet Union. For instance, in my country, Slovakia, they trained Egyptian pilots. Pilots in uh, Prague, that's there was a special hotel for terrorists. That's because of where you're at geographically. They wanted to absorb your countries into the into the Eastern Bloc and the Soviet Union. In other parts of the world, it was us that created terrorist networks. In other parts of the world, it was the Great Britain that created terrorist networks. And Great Britain is well known for harboring terrorists uh, in the city of London. Uh, there's there's no absolutely no doubt about that. But uh, it's, you can't just blame it on the Soviet Union, because that's just not true, my friend. Uh, not true, partially, but there was a lot of them. I'm sorry, we're not here to further your political agenda. We're here to talk about truth. Good night. There's a lot of militants around this world who just want to, you know, they want to further their agenda. I won't help them do that. Won't help them do that. Good evening, you're on the air. Chicken plucker. <laughs> Rang once and hung up. We call those chicken pluckers. Those are, you know, people call those those guys that drove those planes into those buildings cowards. They're not. Somebody who's afraid to call a radio show and chicken out. Those are the real cowards. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Mr. Cooper. Yeah. I'm calling to tender you an apology. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, my name is Jim from Southbury, Connecticut. Okay. I know who you are. You know who I am. Yeah. And, uh... I owe you an apology for uh, for questioning your integrity, and I also owe it to myself to say that because uh, I listen to your program on and off, and I've been listening to it very thoroughly the last several days. And uh, I don't necessarily believe everything you say is true. Not a requirement. Never has been. But uh, I do uh, feel that uh, you're honest in what you're saying. And uh, when I first took on bridge with you, it was over a call I had made about a year ago, and uh, frankly, you broke my balls. Well, that's my job. <laughs> well, I still think you're wrong about doing it, and I resented it. And, uh, you you may have resented it, but it kept you listening, didn't it? Well, yeah, but it... Uh, why, did, why, why were you so masochistic that you had to listen to somebody that you hated so much? You see, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I know human nature, and I know if you listen long enough, you'll come around... Because I'm not lying to anybody, and I am honest, and I am trying to do the right thing. Well, that's, uh, that's what I called to tell you. But if uh, I didn't do that, you might have gone elsewhere and become a great fan of Alex Jones. But I captured you because you hated my guts. And so you couldn't go away because you wanted to bust my balls. Oh, yeah, I wanted to come back at you. Yeah. That, but, uh, and, you and, tried lots, and you tried lots of times. <laughs> well, I tried twice. Yeah. I tried twice. Yep. But, uh, uh, and, and Frank, I'll tell you the truth, you, uh, I think you'd agree with this, you're a very ornery son of a gun. Maybe you've got good reason to be. Yeah, I do. And uh, The guy that sits behind the microphone and strokes you and tells you how smart and wonderful you are is lying to you. He's not doing you a service. And he's giving you a false sense of security and a false sense of intellect that doesn't exist in this country and allows the things to happen like happened last Tuesday and that are fixing to happen worldwide in just a few days. People are going to be dying like flies because of the stupidity of the American people. Well, I, I, I 
hope you're wrong. I'm sure you agree with me. You probably hope you're wrong. So. Oh, I, I pray that I'm wrong every night, but I know absolutely that it's true, and you're going to see it. Well, I, you're going to see it happen. Unfortunately, once again, I uh, I think you're right. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll let you go. But I just want to let you know that. And, uh, well, I appreciate it, and I want to tell you it took a lot of guts for you to make this call, and I I have a lot of respect for you uh, because you were able to do that and. Keep on listening, and maybe you'll become, uh, you know, uh, one of the one of the people that helped turn all this crap around. Well, if I could just say one more thing, not on my behalf, but on somebody up on somebody else's. There's a couple other people out there on another radio station I won't even mention, and I just like to say on their behalf that there's, a, there's one area we're wrong. They're not socialists. They may not have all the information, but these fellows are good-hearted Americans as well. Well, you know. The only time I've ever listened to them, uh, what I told you is what I heard. They, they may have had an off night. I'll give you that, but that's what I heard that night. Fair enough, sir. Okay. Thank you much. Thanks for calling. Oh, boy. 52033. That happens quite frequently, but usually not on the air. Usually I get private calls or, or letters from people. 52033 Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. This is Will from Missouri. Hi, Will. I've got a uh, question. You know, you're, you're constantly telling us not to overlook the obvious and, and to turn things over you know, carefully. Um, there were reported on the uh, news service there about 430 corporations located in the World Trade Center building. Yeah. And uh, I'm not uh, connected to mainstream media at all here in my house, but uh, I was just wondering whether or not there's been any list of, of uh, or articles or front page stories about top executives that may have perished or be supposedly supposed to have perished or be missing? There are lists of everybody that was in that building on our website uh, as far as corporations and businesses go. Then all you have to do is look up the business of the corporation. It'll tell you who the executives were. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can't get out to a library. See, we got stuff on our website you wouldn't, you wouldn't even believe it was on it. So I've never even seen the web uh, uh, a computer. So I've get somebody to teach you. It's real yeah. easy. And libraries have them, and they got people there to help you. Yeah, I saw one in the library one time uh, in there, but I didn't stop to try it. Yeah. But one one of the things that uh, struck me about this was, uh, you know how the Titanic uh, uh, was utilized, and when uh, they were having a real tough time, I believe it was Vanderbilt, getting him to go along with the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they had uh, quite a few people, Morgan and others, that were signed up to go on the Titanic, and they all dropped out, and I was... Just kind of curious as to how many of these top CEOs uh, decided to go golfing or went on an extended vacation. Forget it. Forget it. You're way out. If you think the captain of a ship would intentionally run his ship into an iceberg, you don't know anything about seafaring men. So you don't. You don't. Uh, Absolutely no. Don't you dare try and uh, defame that man's good name by saying he ran that into an iceberg on purpose. Intentionally. Absolutely. Did not happen. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, good night. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is Naked Charlotte. Hi, Nick. How you doing? Good. Uh, Hi. I, I listen to what you were saying the other night. Read what you were talking about on what you'd written on the website about these guys and what uh, just didn't quite add up. And yeah, I agree with you. It sounds more to me like, I sent you an email about this, I don't know if you got already. They sound more like the assassins from the ancient days. Hello? I'm here. Well, I guess he hung up. I don't know what the problem was. Maybe he had a bad connection. 520 is the number. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, Bill, I was wondering if you had seen anything about... Uh the amount of money that uh, they have been stealing from the American public through those money houses and, uh, and the towers that went down. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I just thought it was very convenient that they took the towers out where they run a tremendous amount of bond money and transactions through there. A major portion of the stock market was run through there. A yeah. lot of stock... Uh, uh, brokers were there, which, by the way, uh, brings up something else. I, I was absolutely shocked today when they reopened the stock market to see a lot of companies that have disappeared from the face of the earth still being traded on the New York Stock Exchange. 
<laughs> yes, isn't that interesting? And the stupid sheeple don't even know they're gone, so they're still buying and selling that stock. <laughs> Explain that to me. But I just have a notion that they, they, they like, when they blew up the Oklahoma City building, uh, now, the you, you know, don't, don't even go to these places. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're speculating, and you know that not right on this broadcast. Why are you even doing it? Well, I'm just... Why, why are you even occupying your time with that? I mean, it's nothing you can prove. Why don't you occupy your time with something that's worthwhile that will be fruitful? <laughs> Are productive, well, I, I, are, are, are that will cause you to gain some knowledge that you can spread to other people to help them get educated instead of spinning around in this little cul-de-sac that's going to get you nowhere except, you know, standing on your head in a snowstorm. Start buck naked. That's where that, that's where that will take you. Okay? Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah, don't, don't get off on these weird tangents. I mean, that's Art Bell stuff. We don't do that here. Good evening. You're on the air. Oh, Bill. Dave, New York. Hello, Dave. Uh, a couple things I'd like to be able to uh, write down your website. I'm not computer uh, uh, illiterate. WilliamCooper.com. What is it? WilliamCooper.com. Okay. No, no space between William and Cooper. You mentioned financially, and I will send in a check or however you say. But uh, what, And I was curious. How, however, however I say? Pardon me? However I say, make it for $25,000. No, I mean, I can't. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just making you pay attention to what you say. You sure did. <laughs> uh, what uh, what form? Uh, it's got to be a blank money order. Yeah. Cash or gold or silver coin, nothing else. Okay. And if, you, and if you fill in anything on the money order, we'll just send it back to you. Can I ask you... Uh, or what it costs per hour for this type of, uh, of no, program we put on? No, because I can't tell you that because different shows are charged different rates, and Alan Weiner doesn't want that information to be known. Okay, excellent. What can Americans, what can we do to personally prepare for all the stuff that's going to come down down the road, if I might get your insight on that? Well, <laughs> If you're a religious man, I would make sure that you're right with God, whatever God you believe in, that you have a source of spiritual sustenance and whatever holy books are, are uh, will provide that for you, and that you really understand what it is that you believe, and then that you understand that if you don't believe in freedom and you're not willing to die for it, somebody's going to take that away from you. They'll take your family away from you. They'll take your freedom away from you. They'll take your religion away from you, and they'll make you a slave. And then prepare to fight a war. Make sure that you're provisioned, that you have food, clothing, that you have medical supplies, that you have guns and ammunition to fight a war for 15 years. Wow. You ask me. If you don't want to hear the answer, don't ask me the question, because you're always going to get the truth from me. No, I... Uh, and there, there, there's going to be a war. Food, clothing, ammo, etc. I hear you have to sign for ammo now before you get it. You I don't walk in and buy with cash. That's bullshit. Is that right? Okay. That's right here in Arizona. And if anybody dared try to make anybody in Arizona sign for ammunition, they probably, you know, wouldn't be walking around straight too too long. Last question: What are 22 uh, SSS uh, sniper subsonic bu uh, bullets? Never heard of it. 22 SS, I never heard of it. Sub, uh, sniper I never heard of it. The small things are I never, left, I right. never heard of it. Okay. There's no point in discussing something with me that I don't know anything about. Very good. Uh, okay. Uh, down to the bottom, one of the trade centers, uh, I heard today that there was a vault that they got at that there was supposedly to be a lot of gold in, and mm -hmm. it was not there. Did you hear anything on that? That's a lie. Okay. Well, thank you again. You're welcome. There is a vault that was buried by the rubble that has tons of gold in it. But nobody has got to it. And the gold is not gone. It's all there. <laughs> Good night, folks. We're out of time. And uh, don't miss tomorrow night's broadcast of the Hour of the Time. I should be rested and refreshed and... Uh, 
do a much better job than uh, I did tonight. So I apologize for not being at the top of, you know, what you normally would expect. And good night, Annie Flynn Allison. I love you. God bless everybody. God bless the Republic. And uh, you better say a lot of prayers, folks, because we're headed in the wrong direction. If you, have, if you have not been to our website, go there. Go there. You'll be amazed at what we've provided for you. WilliamCooper.com. Go there. Now, stay there so you've got a handle on things. And don't forget to go to the exclusive archives and the news archives. And there's tons of other links and things. You could actually spend six months on our website and never see it all. You've been listening to the Hour of the Sun. I'm William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. And now you know why. forget, folks, when you go to our website, please participate in the poll. It's very important. Very important. Please participate in the poll. Thanks. See you tomorrow night.